actually at the same time on it, isn't that for sure? So my presentation will pop on, or do I have to get it going? Thank you very much, and I'm, I'm quite happy to be here to talk about graphite, and especially battery-ready graphite, uh, from the only uh, American-sourced uh, uh, project uh, in the space. And uh, this picture in the background is taken from our, looking over part of our 40,000 acres we have in southern Alabama. Uh, and uh, I think when we took that picture, we're standing on about 1,500 feet below our feet of, of graphitic material. And we have the typical disclaimers, and uh, we are a public company. And the uh, key thing about Alabama Graphite is that we are producing battery-ready coated spherical graphite. Uh, our, our goal is to not produce graphite. We will process primary graphite uh, and then continue on to the secondary process graphite. Uh, we believe that the world does not need more graphite. Uh, there's plenty there, uh, and what the world needs is battery-ready graphite. Uh, and we're actually going to produce that in the most environmentally sustainable manner. Uh, the Chinese presently control a lot of it, and they use a sulfuric or hydrofluoric acid to process. We do not. Um, again, our mission statement is to be American-sourced and manufactured uh, green energy supply chain producer. A couple of takeaways from, from this talk is that, first of all, coated spherical graphite, CSPG, is a critical material in the green energy supply chain. And two, Alabama Graphite is the only pure play development company for coated spherical graphite. The picture of the batteries there, we made about 60 of those and uh, continue to show, show test work from that later on. Uh, key thing is, is the, is the rapidly expanding lithium-ion battery uh, business and currently 100% of the coated spherical graphite for batteries comes from China and that's a key thing because the other alternative is synthetic graphite and we just saw this morning about 46% of that comes from China. Both are not an environmentally sustainable source and synthetic graphite is extremely expensive. So we are the, looking to be the only battery grade natural graphite producer in the United States. Uh, key thing is a big difference between being sourced and, and manufactured and sourced. Uh, one of the key things about being sourced in the USA is that opens up the door for us with Department of Defense contractors. And I'll talk about that a bit later on, but we are uh, the only company out there who can actually <coughs> fulfill the needs and requirements to supply the US military for their battery requirements. And uh, we have signed multiple non-disclosure agreements and supply materials to uh, ongoing uh, uh, work with different, different uh, U.S. contractors. Uh, again, key thing made in USA uh, is, 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 is our main uh, talking point. Uh, sourced uh, is, is also is extremely important. Uh, any other graphite uh, to be produced outside of China is not in the United States. Uh, and you see that the picture on the right with what's going on in the United States. Uh, recently, that source in America aspect has become even more, uh, more important. Uh, it was important before the election, and I think we've seen it come in uh, extremely important now. Uh, primary processing flake graphite. Uh, again, 100% of the graphite consumed uh, in the United States is imported, namely from China, and about 335,000 tons per year of graphite is, is produced. And uh, again, from, from China, 75% uh, of it is there. And consumption right now, 40% is the refractory business, uh, but up and coming is the, is the uh, lithium ion battery business, uh, amongst others. Uh, there's 10 times more graphite in the lithium ion battery than there is lithium. Uh, other graphite development companies are looking to produce graphite. All their business models are based on that. Ours is not, ours is based on producing coated spherical graphite. And it is, it is the supply critical material for a battery is, is graphite, not lithium. Um, currently, the consumption for about 80,000 tons per year of, of, of graphite is consumed. Uh, about 50,000 50, tons of that is now natural. That number has been growing. And again, 100% of this coated spherical graphite comes from China. I already mentioned that there's more, more graphite than lithium ion battery. And the selling price for synthetic graphite for batteries is $20,000 per ton. Uh, for natural, it's between eight to twelve thousand dollars per ton. And along with the, along with the synthetic graphite, there's a huge CO2 footprint. Uh, this picture was actually from a, an article in the Washington Post, 
and uh, talking about China pollution, specifically with graphite. And one of the key things we're looking at is you cannot make a green automobile or a green product with a dirty input. And now more and more companies are being held accountable for their source of materials. Uh, and again, 100% of the coated spherical graphite for lithium ion batteries comes from China. This picture tells a lot, and this is again, I, I've witnessed this type of situation myself. And uh, again, uh, one very quick anecdote is I was in a, in, in a spherical graphite production facility in China, uh, and it wasn't running. I asked them why it wasn't running. They said the government asked us to only run at night. You can't see the dust at night. So that was their first step to dealing with the dust problem. Uh, the next problem will be to install dust collection, and that will cost more money. So again, the costs from China are only going to go up. And that doesn't even begin to deal with the acid that they use to purify the graphite. Um, we basically are showing to be a potential with the PA numbers, uh, one of the lowest cost producers. Uh, we can compete with the current economics with the prices coming out of China. Our location is ideal. It's one of the best jurisdictions I've ever worked in. And we don't have any more frogs in order to, uh, to, to do our permitting process. This is one of the last producing graphite mines in Alabama. So we are actually re-establishing production in the United States. It was there up through World War I, uh, through World War II. Uh, and this, this particular facility uh, is long burnt down, uh, but it's, it's uh, within about uh, uh, half a mile of our existing location. Uh, this area, again, on the map is where graphite was produced. And uh, we also have in, in reserve a smaller uh, project, uh, the Bama Mine Project. And again, a, a half an hour north of Montgomery, uh, quite frankly, where Hyundai has one of their biggest plants in the United States. Uh, our process is go, to go from a diggable graphite, there's no drilling and blasting, right through to the battery ready uh, materials. And uh, primary process graphite will not be sold. Uh, we'll continue to process uh, in, and to make the coated sphere of the graphite ready for, for lithium ion battery applications. We've seen the demand forecasts, I won't spend too much time on this. Uh, we are seeing potential exponential growth in the space. And that's that, those numbers from Panasonic. Uh, again, we don't just produce the concentrate, we will produce ultimately the coated sphere of the graphite. Any other business model in the graphite space stops in the gray, we continue right through to the green, the highest margin product. Again, this is shows again why we're doing this, the pricing. National graphite for price for, for concentrate is between 750 to 850 a ton right now for, for a high grade uh, large flake. Uh, we've moved up the value chain into the coated sphere of the graphite for obvious reasons. And again, uh, we'll probably look into moving up further to the, uh, into the anode paste as well. It's a much easier product to handle. Uh, here again, we're seeing where the strong demand is coming, over 400,000 tons per year of graphite will be required for batteries alone. Uh, that is over and above the existing graphite market. There's 100 uses of graphite today. Uh, lithium ion battery is going to eclipse all of them. Uh, our battery results were published were showing a very efficient battery in a comparison to the current commercial synthetic. For example, uh, Panasonic produces all the batteries right now for Tesla. And Tesla does use synthetic graphite, or Panasonic does use synthetic graphite. We can show a better producing product for less than half the cost. And in fact, we do believe that Tesla is using, or Panasonic is using uh, a mix of silicon in, uh, probably up to about 7% is the maximum amount that we uh, see being used as an enhancement to that. We're actually working on that ourselves. Uh, with that, having said that, our current uh, metrics for, for our batteries are actually quite good in comparison to synthetics. And uh, again, so we made 60, 60 uh, 2016 lithium half cells, and we are basically um, uh, doing the most environmentally responsible manner. I'll just very quickly get to the quick uh, economics of the project. 52% uh, uh, IRR, very low capex. We're starting small uh, for obvious reasons. It's easier to raise a smaller amount of money. Um, we have PEA completed. And we have lots of graphite. This is a small percentage of our, of our graphite uh, that we have on the properties, our resource. Uh, our current business model uses only 10% of our resource. We have just shy of 4 million tons of contained graphite. And uh, incredible logistics. 
uh, three hours from the port of Mobile, so shipping to Europe is also a strong possibility for us. And again, it's from a permitting standpoint, state level permitting, I don't see the uh, species at risk issues uh, there. I also don't see the uh, First Nations issues that I've dealt with in Canada. Uh, and again, the very, very, um, you know, power nearby, roads nearby, and uh, very quickly moving towards feasibility study, which is also a scale up of our secondary process and uh, our capital structure. So right now we're on 11 cents and uh, with a um, uh, 14 million dollar market cap. And key thing, management, I'll just wrap things up here, but we've done this before. Uh, I was chief engineer at one of two graphite mines that got up and running in Canada in the early 1990s. Um, and also George Hawley working with us, he started his uh, career in graphite uh, with Morgan Crucible here in the UK, uh, making all sorts of things with, with graphite. And uh, board of directors, uh, we've all done this before. Uh, when I was at the one graphite mine in Canada in the early 1990s, Jean and Danielle were at the other in, in Quebec, and Dr. Gareth Hatch, based here in the UK, just joined our team, and uh, he is a PhD uh, material science engineer, and he has, in fact, uh, um, worked with DOD on multiple projects, mostly around errors. And I'm out of time, so this presentation will be available, I think, online, and uh, Tyler and myself uh, will be here for the rest of the day and the rest of the week if there are any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.